Hey everybody, it's Shannon. Hopefully everyone will be quiet, kids included. <laughs> it's four o'clock on Thursday, Arizona time, and welcome back to the Shannon Miller Show. <laughs> Sometimes it just feels like it, right? Um, I wanted to come out here and talk about a couple things. Um, today we're going to talk about how to increase your pricing and feel good about it. As you guys, hi Nicole, how are you? As you guys all know, um, we're, we're pushing towards the end of the fourth quarter. Um, there are several things that you should have already done. I'm going to reiterate them for convenience for everyone because we have had a lot of new members. I think we've had like three or 400 members all um, that are brand new into the group. And um, before I begin, let me introduce myself officially. My name is Shannon Miller. I'm actually a cleaning business owner here state of Arizona. I hope that you guys can hear me and I have the volume up on my Perfect. I didn't check that before I went live. Oops. Um, and I actually, uh, it's called madebroker.com and you can um, check it out. It's in Arizona and I've been in business for over a decade. I'm also CEO and founding member of Clean Freaks University where I teach other cleaning business owners how to run the back end of their business instead of being run over by their business. So if that's something that you are interested in doing in 2023, please let me know. Um, we did just have our first and last one of the year, the Structure, Scale, and Profit Cleaning Business Academy. It will not be offered live next year. We're doing a completely different format. So if you are interested in doing a live course, if I can get enough of you, I will um, have one more. Hi, Danella, how are you? And um, there's just a couple of things that you should have done for your fourth quarter, and then we'll talk about how to feel good about giving price increases. Um, fourth quarter is always an exciting time. It's the, you know, pulling in the reins because you've, you've run hard all summer long, right? Fall gets in, the leaves are changing, you're starting to nest because winter time is coming, so you want to get everything all together. You've got to get all your tax information together. You're, you're trying to get your books caught up if you didn't do that already. Um, you're going to print out your reports to make sure that you're going to hit fourth quarter um, in those goals. But most importantly, you're going to have already called all of your clients and you're going to discuss the holiday schedule. Now, if you, um, depending on how, where you are in your business and, and you're small enough, you could call. If you have 400 clients, obviously you're not going to be able to call 400 clients. You could have your assistants do that for you. I like the more personal method of the phone call, but some people, it's just because of how busy you are. You might send an email out, you might send a text message out if you do mass text messaging, whatever form of communication you choose to do, I highly suggest that you get in contact with your clients and say, just to let you know, um, the holiday season is upon us. I just wanna double check and I have you for your scheduled appointments for here, here and here, and we are closed. Like we're closed, for example, we close early on the 24th, we're closed the 25th and the 26th. And then in the following week, we're actually closed the 30th and the 31st. And then it just depends on the year. Sometimes we're closed the 31st and the 1st of the year, just so people can spend time with their families. So if that's how your holiday schedule runs, you need to make sure that your clients' days or cleaning dates don't fall on those dates and that you're doubling up and moving them around. Sometimes they go and visit family and they forget to tell you. And personally, I would rather know ahead of time so I can fill the spot because every spot on your schedule is worth money, right? So if, if you don't call and then they'll say at the last minute, oh yeah, I forgot to tell Shannon that, you know, don't have your crew come because I'm going to Hawaii this year, which is great, but you don't want to be, they, you just don't want them to tell you at the last minute. So um, I'm trying to prepare you for your fourth quarter. So you should have already called all of your clients, emailed or text or whatever you choose to do to see um, if they're um, holiday schedule and they're gonna commit to whatever the holiday schedule is. And then usually at that point, I will pre-schedule them for the whole year because I only had so many spots. And then that way I scheduled them on the digital calendar system. So if they pick Thursdays at 9 a.m., they knew that every, 20, um, every other week for 26 weeks or 26 visits, they're gonna be scheduled at Thursday at 9 a.m. And that I had 10 spots Thursday at 9 a.m. and they got one of them. Um, because sometimes people want to change their date from Thursdays to Mondays because, you know, in 2023, maybe all of their doctor's appointments are on Thursdays instead of Mondays. You just never know. So it's always good to check in. Um, number two that you should have done, and this is an opportunity that you should take advantage of, even if you don't have the plastic cards. I just sold $1,000 in gift cards today. I didn't have to do anything. I just happened to pick up the phone <laughs> and they said, do you have gift cards? I said, yes, we do. 
And uh, they said, I go, what do you want? And they're like, $1,000. I want to buy my mom $1,000 with the house cleaning. And I said, sweet. So <laughs> we got all the credit card information and processed it, sent over the gift card. You can do it digitally or you can have the physical hard cards. It's kind of too late to get the plastic cards in on time for the holidays, but we all have Word on our computers. You could make a gift card, just make sure you number them and that you initial and date so you don't have someone who gives you fraud. I've had that happen. So um, don't miss an opportunity to make an extra 20 or 30 grand, depending on the size of your business, for your business by getting gift cards. Gift cards do not expire, remember that. I know I've seen a larger corporations do all kinds of weird things lately, but technically, as far as I'm concerned, and, and I haven't heard anything different, please let me know if you've had heard different, that gift cards do not expire. So they're good for the entity of however long they are. Sometimes people move, they get thrown in a box, then they unpack the box five years later, and they're like, oh my God, I have this gift card, do you still honor it? Yes. Have your, have your prices increased? Yes, they have. So you're just going to adjust, and they'll just pay the difference. Um, and obviously, you know, just follow the protocol of getting a credit card to secure their deposit. So gift cards you should be doing, you should have already have let your clients know about the fourth quarter holiday schedule and any holiday closings that you're going to have. Um, so that's really important. And then um, also what I used to do, and I only did this for clients that I liked because there's nothing worse than having a contract with someone that you don't like, speaking from experience. Um, you can actually send out an email or a flyer to leave on people's counter. And housekeeping is a great gift to give from a husband to a wife or just a wife to a wife or whoever, however that works out for you. But it's a great gift to give. And if they pre-purchased a whole year of house cleaning based on my current market value, um, I would give them a 15% discount. Now, the caveat was that they gave me cash or check. It's not... I'm going to give you a 15% discount and then you charge it on your credit card. That's not how it works. Um, because then you have to pay the merchant fee on the, you know, the 2,600 bucks or the $4,500 or the $7,000 or whatever kind of client it is. So if you, um, and I would not do that. I would not exceed whatever two or 3% of your gross. So if you're new at doing this, I do have an old contract format that you can follow. Just hit me up if you happen to sell one. <laughs> And you can copy and paste the pieces that you want, and we'll just scratch out the person's name. Um, but you can you can pre-sell your, your services, and then you have cash flow at the end of the year. So if you wanted to buy new vacuums for your crew, or if you wanted to have a nice Christmas party for your crew, or whatever it is, and then you just keep the extra funds in an escrow account um, so that you ha have those funds in case they want a refund. And there's a very strict particular refund with the purchase, obviously, they can have their money back. That's why you keep it in escrow minus whatever the discount fee is. So if they cancel the contract, they can do that. So whatever the 15%. So if you gave them a $2,600 contract and they got a 15% off, I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but that amount, the 750 or 850 um, would be the money that you would actually keep for the discount. That would be their cancellation fee. If that um, is confusing, private message me and I can kind of go over in detail what that is. Um, but that's a great way to get extra cash flow in um, for fourth quarter. And remember, don't do more. If you're new at it, only do one or two. Um, don't do 10 because that will, um, because as we fluctuate with inflation, I don't want you to cut yourself short. Um, so that is really, really important. Um, the last thing, I spoke to nine business owners this week who... Um, who either had purchased my um, contract bundle and didn't utilize it or didn't understand the full process of the contract bundle. The reason why I happen to have one here, it's um, right here. It, the reason why I have a contract and not everyone feels comfortable with it is every single item that's in the contract or the agreement, how it's, um, that's the technical term to make it easier on the person reciprocating whatever it is that you need from them. Um, every single item on that contract is a blunder that I made in my business. Every single one. So I made them so I didn't want to feel the pain of the ouch because I had made a mistake. Um, sometimes I ate $100. Sometimes I ate $500. Sometimes I ate $800. Um, sometimes I ate a whole cleaning. It just depended 
on what the situation was, but I tried to make it so I wouldn't have to repeat the process again and, and eat it. No one likes to eat money, especially when you worked really hard for it. We all work really hard for our money. So when you have the contract, how it's supposed to work, if you don't have it on a digital formatting system like DocuSign or HelloSign or whatever, Signaturely or whatever it is you've chosen to use, I think there's still a couple of them that offer like up to two or three of them a month. Um, take advantage of that free use of that software and upload the format and then you just highlight the areas that they need to initial and sign and send it over to them. And that way you've covered yourself. And if you don't have the funds because you're still starting out and you don't have the digital um, subscription, you can do it the old fashioned way. I physically would actually PDF the whole document over. And if it was too big of a document, you'd have to compress it or, or split it into two, two, two PDFs. They would have to print it out. They would have to sign it. And then they would screenshot it with their phone and send it back. That was the old fashioned low tech way. I mean, there's always a way to work around it. Or um, if you have someone who is not tech savvy, bring two contracts with you already pre-printed out. Don't assume that the person has a printer, especially with move out cleanings and one time cleanings. They're usually in a perpetual state of chaos. They're not going to like think that they can manage to photocopy an 11 page document, print out two copies bring them there when you arrive and say, you need to sign this and don't start the job until they sign the contract. And then, because I'm speaking from experience, when you have the signed contract, they get to keep the one that's unsigned. That's their copy. And the signed copy goes back in your vehicle. And the reason why it goes back in your vehicles, I've actually had someone take the contract. Um, and I didn't realize it was missing and then dispute everything that I had done and then, you know, try to, and, and ultimately I had to fight to get the money back. So I've learned the hard way. <laughs> Not everybody is honest. So when you get the signed contract done, if you do it this way, the, the low tech method, which is fine, it totally works and it totally is valid. Make sure you put that contract in your vehicle and that your vehicle is locked so that no one goes in there and like takes your contract. Cause I left it on the kitchen counter thinking it was all good. And then the homeowner had gotten, something had transpired between the other cleaner, one of the cleaning techs who was there and I, I didn't grab it. I was like, Oh, you know, Michelle, can you just grab that contract? And the homeowner had grabbed the sign one. So I had no proof of anything. And then I had to fight her to get it back. And it was just, it was a $950 cleaning. So <laughs> you just, you just never know how far people will go to try to get something for free. So learn from my experience on that. And then what we actually came here to talk about was um, how to raise your prices and feel good about it. When, and you guys, you guys hear me talk about it all of the time. We, and I'm not an economist. These are just my opinions on what I've seen and what I've heard and my cousins I've spoken to who live in the UK. And then I have a couple other cousins and other destinations. And then I have a friend in Turkey. Um, it's good to connect with the world where the internet has made it convenient that way. So you can kind of check in. It doesn't take, you know, seven days to get a letter back from somebody or two weeks. You know, when I lived in Lake Tahoe, we would mail letters to France. It would take like three weeks to get an answer back, right? That's not how it works anymore. You don't have to rely on snail mail. You can send an email or if you have their international text message, you can do that too. Um, and then there's even some apps that you can do that are low budget that to communicate back and forth. But you should be getting ready. If you have not given a price increase, I pray that you already have. Fourth quarter is an automatic price increase. I used to suggest that your price increases used to be five to 7% automatically. Um, because everything is so high, I suggest that you give at least a 10% increase um, for every single client that you have. Regardless if you've already done two price increases or not, we, there's a lot of things going on in the world stage that you need to start paying attention to because you guys are all business owners. Um, for example, there is the question over diesel fuel. Diesel fuel, trucks run this country. I know that we do a lot of transitioning of products through the train system, which also requires diesel. They don't run on coal or steam anymore. Um, so that's important to start to pay attention to what's going on because if there is no diesel fuel, that could affect a lot of things. That could affect you getting your product. That could affect, um, you know, how things um, are just distributed. 
been a long day. So start to pay attention a little bit, but I highly suggest that you have, if you have not given a price increase, that you do so. I actually don't even tell my clients anymore. They're all, they all know that at the end of the year, they're getting a bump. So if you um, are unsure and have not done it before, there is a price increase template inside the group. Um, I think you just have to search price increase template. It spits it right up. You just print it out, um, copy and paste, make it yours, and start to distribute out the price increases to your clients. Now, the caveat to that is that you don't give, if you've not ever given a price increase, do not give a price increase to everyone all at once. I don't want to have to have a conversation with you about how all your clients dropped you all at once because you gave, you know, 47 of your clients a price increase and um, now you have no income coming in. I recommend that you do at least two to three a week until you go through all of your clients. Some people are going to drop off the schedule. It's just the way it works. Um, and I totally get it. You can decide whether you're going to keep them at that price or not. Legacy clients will never be at the current market rate of all your new clients. They never will. There's going to be a gap. And eventually your legacy clients, depending on what you decide to do, are going to fall off your schedule. That's just how it works. As we kind of increase, you're looking for those golden unicorns so that you can make 100K in your first year. And then, you know, groom yourself up to the 350K. And then the half mil and then the seven figure. And then, you know, the eight, nine. And I think there's um, two businesses that I can think of off the top of my head that do, you know, almost 10 figures. And they're really large entities and they're scary beasts. <laughs> so... Um, and that's just how big the cleaning industry is in the United States. Um, I know a little bit about the cleaning industry. Like in New Zealand, it's the Kiwis have a different way of formatting things on how they structured in their taxes. The Canadians also have, I know there's a couple Canadians in the group from Quebec and Montreal. You guys have a different way of how you do it as well. Um, Brazil, I know a couple people in Brazil and I also know a couple people in Africa. Like well, for example, when you because depending on what part of Africa you're in, I have a really good friend in Uganda and he actually started a carpet cleaning company. I've known him about five years now. And when he first started, he just had an old beat up carpet cleaner and an upholstery cleaner. So he used to physically remove because house cleaning and carpet cleaning and upholstery cleaning are all brand new entities in the country of Africa, depending on what part you're in. So he would physically remove the carpets that had never been cleaned before and most of them were area rugs and extract them and do them all by hand he's improved and he has several workers now and i think he has like three or four machines so you just never know how everyone's business is going to go but when you do business in africa like if you need to rent a piece of equipment you also get the workers so you have to pay the worker too that's how it works <laughs> so you just learn all of these things along the way um, when you're in the cleaning industry right so that's how you give a price increase gently and feel good about it if you still are struggling with giving a price increase by all means please hit me up i'll walk you through uh, we can do a quick chat over the phone you guys all deserve to earn your worth i cannot emphasize that enough we are i consider us the 23rd trade and um, you all deserve to make money you decide the price, not the client. The client only decides whether they can afford the price or not. And then they decide whether you do a good job or not. If you have a client, and the reason why I have the contracts, if you have a client and you do the thing and you come to the agreement and your client decides that you didn't do a good enough job so they're not going to pay you, you can actually sue them. Unfortunately, I've had to sue, uh, since 2020, I've sued like 15 people. Not because I enjoy doing it and not because I'm, I'm, mad about i'm inconvenienced and i'm mad about you know being jilted so to speak it's to prove a point that you cannot go ahead and order a service and not pay for the service you might not be happy with the service but you have to give the actual vendor the opportunity to fix it you can't decide whether you're going to pay them or not i'm sure many homeowners if we did that to them they wouldn't like it very much at all oh, i'm sorry you can't have your paycheck you messed up you didn't cross your t and dot your i i mean sometimes some of these people are like whoa where did they come from right so you just never know but that's just how you give a price increase and you feel good about it do not feel guilty about giving a price increase you deserve to earn top dollar right now the national average is about sixty dollars an hour per person um so that's going to be 120 bucks per hour 
based on a flat rate price. If you are confused and you don't know how to do a flat rate price, I do have the Pricing Blueprint Masterclass. I still have it for a very low price. It's $20.22. It legitimately is a 34 minute video of me talking and I go down and I break down how you do a regular maintenance cleaning price wise, a top to bottom deluxe cleaning price wise, and a move out cleaning. It covers those three items so that you are charging a flat rate price because that's literally the only way to make any money in this industry. Anyway, I could talk until I'm blue in the face. I don't want to take up any more of your time. If you guys have any questions, by all means, hit me up. You guys take care.